What up gamers, today I'll be taking you guys through some four cost comps that I think will be good next patch. Now, my main focus of this video is to give you guys a lot of default variations that you guys can play from, especially if you haven't played any of the PBE because if you've been only playing live, four cost comps have been terrible. Level eight comps are terrible, but next patch, the devs are trying to ham fist four cost to mean meta, and I think it's actually gonna work. For a while I thought this set was doomed with four cost, but with the durability patch, if you guys are unfamiliar, every single four cost is getting a durability buff. As you can see here, every single one of them is getting buffed. The only one that's even getting any nerf at all is Kaisa. Some really big buffs on here is to Lilia. Lilia is getting a very large buff and Nautilus is getting a very large buff. And then getting HP onto bruisers is a very large buff. So like Silas getting 200 HP is a very large buff because he is a bruiser. And then Morgana is getting quite a sizable buff as well here. And with all of these changes, I think combat is going to be a lot slower on next patch because things like Yone won't be as meta, a lot of backline access, things that explode you like Kaisa won't be as meta. And with the durability coming in, even for things like Kaisa and things like Yone, when they're stuck on your front line, they'll be stuck on your front line for longer. So I do think next patch is going to be a lot slower combat. The other buff that I didn't mention is Annie is getting a sizable 200 HP buff, which if you don't know, Annie's ability also scales off of HP. It scales off of maximum health, how tanky she gets. So this is quite a big buff as well here. So with that in mind, I just wanted to show you guys, my express goal for this video is just to show you guys what some level eight comps can look like if you're playing around four costs especially if you've only played reroll this whole set. So let's just get into it with the first composition. And I think a four invoker variants are going to be pretty good on next patch, especially when you have augments like mana shield, jeweled Lotus, combat caster, and you build items like blue buff, et cetera, that sort of thing. And so the main carry of this composition is going to be Lilia with a side carry of Morgana. Additionally, I do think you could just side carry a two star a loon or a one star azir so just keep that in mind if you want to put your items in different places but i think morgana is going to be a beast in this composition even though she doesn't benefit from the four invoker just comps are very tanky and then i think lilia and morgana will just clean up the whole fight together but again you can put items on a loon or azir and then we want to put our tank items onto annie i still do not trust nautilus with the tank items maybe with his buffs he'll be really strong with tank items and he'll actually cast twice We'll see, but I just don't trust this guy with my tank items. So I think main tank items go on Annie, off tank on Nautilus, but I could be wrong about that. We'll see. Uh, yeah, and so the whole point of this comp is that we have these big tanks in the front line. We have a lot of CC. We have CC here, CC here, and then we have like the soft CC with like Morgana and Alun, right? And then the and then the attack speed buff here. And then we also can buy more time with Azir once we hit Azir. Before you hit Azir, you have Janna. Janna does the same thing that Azir does, buys some time, not as much as Azir. Anyways, we're going to look for items like blue buff, gunblade, death cap on Lilia. You can swap this out for an Archangel's GS or Guardbreaker, but I think death cap in this variant will probably be the best here. Uh, and the Morgana, we just want to put our utility items here. So I can roll a Nomicon, a Static Shiv, and then a Mana Generation item, either Spear of Sojin or Adaptive Helm. I figure blue buff might be okay here, but you just won't have enough tiers. And then Annie, look for a setup that looks something like this having a protector's out just having her cast really fast into the fight so at the beginning of the fight annie is a little squishy i think with the durability buff she will always cast now uh, but just having her cast as early as possible into the fight before the enemy cc goes through i think is quite important so i think protector's out is actually going to be a very good item on next patch if you have annie and nautilus on your board just getting the cc off before their cc very important used to be something very 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 important in in tft and i think it's going to come back if we have a little bit slower of meta Anyways, and then items like this accompanying with that should be good to go. I feel pretty confident that this comp will be good next patch. Just the Gigabus of Lilia, and I do think combat is going to slow down, which will help out Morgana, Annie, Nautilus, and units like Alune. I think we'll help them out quite a bit. All right, here's another Lilia composition. This is a Mythic variant. And now, obviously, this comp is going to be a lot better if you have an emblem and your, your stuff can look a lot different because you could drop Cho'Gath and play like Udyr if you have a... A mythic emblem and for augments i put over here just like it's going to be epic can be a great indicator to like oh okay i'm gonna go fast eight play this comp you know play around cogma in the early and that sort of thing and then things like bulk ascension again i do think the meta is going to be a lot slower assuming people are playing around the four costs and stuff you know reroll meta rerolls are still going to be strong and that sort of thing and like things like ghostly that are that are bursty are still going to be strong but i think in a lot of lobbies things like ascension things like bulk 
stuff like that are going to actually be good. Don't take Ascension early game. Only I really only look to take Ascension on 4-2 or if Ascension turns out to be really, really strong in the patch and take it on 3-2 as well. But I do have a feeling that things like this are going to be strong. These type of augments are going to be good. And then again, Lily optimization, pretty much the same as last time. You know, Managin is even more valuable on this because we're not playing four invoker. So something like Adaptive or Sojin is, is, is good in this. Whereas when you're playing four invokers, like Adapt or Sojin especially isn't very good. So look for blue buff primarily, but Adaptive and Sojin can, can, can do some work here. And then we want to put our utility items onto Huey. So our Static Shiv, our Morello, and then if you can build an extra mana generation on him, that's great. You can put that here. Before you hit Huey, uh, you can just play Kog'Maw. Um, you know, if you can remake a Kog'Maw, because Kog'Maw will likely be holding Lilia's items here. So before you hit that, you can do that. Obviously, if you have an emblem, it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about hitting Huey. And then also, you can just swap out Cho'Gath, like we said earlier. So we want to main carry Lilia. We can off carry Huey or Azir here. And then we want to stack our tank items onto Orn and Nautilus. Uh, Orn, so he can print items for your Nautilus and then Nautilus because he got the ma major buffs and he'll be the one benefiting the most from Mythic here in our tank line. So we can be good to go there. And some some flex spots here is like Nico and Alawi, but I think these are really great in this comp. Oh, well, Nico is our Mythic, but Alawi, I think it's just great here. It gives us arc, gives our whole team 20 AP, and you'll be good to go. If you want to go nine, an easy add into this comp is going to be a ghostly or heavenly unit. So like you can play like Soraka to get the extra AP, or you can play Morgana for the utility and for the ghostly and you'd be good to go. All right, next up, we're going to be talking about, this is a four Umbral, four ghostly composition. This is a Morgana and a Silas and Kane trio carry comp. And I think this is a pretty good generic comp to play. And so let's just look at it here. We're playing the four and four. Obviously you need set to play the four and four. If you don't have a set, you could probably play like a random Yorick or something like that or a Darius or something like that, just to get the Umbral or a random Warden. I do think the Umbral is probably gonna be better than the Warden. So yeah, to make this comp, you do need a set. But yeah, you can play those flex spots before that. Anyways, the whole core of this composition is we're, we're really just buying a lot of time with Silas and the Umbral for Morgana and Kane to clean up the fight. Having things like Fully Adaptive is extremely strong. I just think Fully Adaptive is very good. It, it really enables units like Amumu, Diana, and Silas. Silas is getting quite a sizable buff next patch. As I said before, he's getting that 200 buff, which is more valuable on bruisers. And then along with a loon being buffed, Morgana being buffed, Kane getting his durability buff as well. I do think this, do think this variant could be quite strong. And then also additionally, if you get some emblems, you can dip into six umbral, six ghostly. So there's some stuff that we can talk about there. And I do have another variant where we actually go six umbral that we'll talk about in a second, which you would, I would only look to really play probably if I have an umbral emblem, that's probably the only times I'd look to play it. Uh, so anyways, a setup like this on Silas is is really, really, really insane. But obviously you can't build the double adaptive. Just go for, you know, just a tank item here. You know, whatever tank item you have to make, like you can go, you can go Dequal, Bramble, Stare, Warmogs, probably not Protector's Vow, but probably okay. BT is okay, um, but it's just not as good. And then at level nine here, you can just add a Sage unit or, or whatever, or add an Invoker or whatever. There's a lot of flex spots here. You can add an Arc, you know, so many flex spots with the Legendary. So you can add, you know, yeah, we already got that. So many flex spots. Anyways, I do like this setup. Seems pretty good to me. All right, next up is six Umbral. And I do think this comp is a little awkward, but if you can get it online, it is so strong. Like, I think it's actually already strong on the current patch. Except for that, it's just it's just really hard to get to this board um, on current patch. And, you know, you're <laughs> if you sack the whole game to get to this board and your Morgana just gets one shot uh, at the beginning of the fight, can feel quite bad. But next patch, I think this is going to be really good. So this is a trio carry with Silas, Alun, and Morgana. And you do need an emblem to play this composition. And if you get Umbral emblem, it always goes on Morgana, man. It is insane when you get this on Morgana with a Morello. Morello will trigger the execute on Umbral. And they are buffing six Umbral execute next patch. I believe it's going from 18% to 20%. Woo! Uh, so if you can get that online, it's going to be crazy. And again, this is another great fully adaptive build so a great indicator to play this is either going to be the umbral crest or fully adaptive you can look to play this again if you don't get the umbral crest then you can maybe look for the composition we just showed before the four and four comp the four ghostly the four umbral but if you have the umbral crest definitely look for something that looks like this and we're just going to jam six umbral however you need that to happen obviously it's going to be a lot stronger once we hit set but if you need to play a random yorick or, or whatever here uh, before you hit you'll be good to go um, and then Lee Sin is a complete flex spot Lee Sin is getting quite a sizable buff he's getting an 80 buff and an hp buff and so i think next patch he might actually be a reliable utility unit that we can play here so and then he can combo with darius here so you just play darius with Lee Sin, 
And so he'll stun and mana reap for us, which is great. Uh, we love that. But we want to stack our items on the Umbral units. So as we said, the reason why we're looking to play this is because the Umbral 18 to 20% executed is being buffed here. And so we want to itemize the units that can actually benefit from that. So units like Alune, Morgana, and Silas, I think are going to be really, really, really strong in this composition. Other than that, you can put items onto Set and Kane, I suppose. Uh, but again, Kane will not benefit from this. And then Set, you know, you just need him to start and then he'll start really cranking in this comp. Look for augments like Umbral Crest, Adaptive Helm, Wrath of the Moon, and you're, you're going to be good to go. All right, next up is like the most standard composition I can think of. This was a comp I played a lot on PBE and it always felt terrible, but that was because Ash was so bad. And, and Morgana, after she got nerfed on the PBE, was has been really struggling. But again, I think we are in for a slower meta and slower metas really benefit units like Ash and Morgana. So I do think this will be a lot stronger on next patch. And so anyways, this is so basic. It's so great. You just play four Warden and then this backline Pretty much every single game, Ash, Aphelios, Morgana, Syndra here, and then you're going to primary carry Ash. You can secondary carry either Morgana or Syndra, and then usually when you're playing this variant, you're probably going to want to tank Amumu, but maybe Nautilus is a Giga Tank next patch. I don't think so. You're probably going to tank Amumu. Maybe good to go. Look for items like Rageblade GS plus one are going to be really, really, really going to Ash. Either Deathblade or IE is going to be great here, and then have some type of shred or some armor shred on your team. Yeah, Last Whisper is great on Aphelios. I know Aphelios already applies a Sunder, but Last Whisper is better. He's the better, he's the best applier on your team. But if you need to put like an even shroud on your board, then you can even shroud like Nautilus or Set or something like that. Set is pretty cool because he'll actually activate it for himself. But the problem is Set is not very tanky unless you're able to activate his faded trait, which we will in this game. And so if you're playing faded, if you actually get the faded online, it'll be Syndra hovered onto Set is where, what we're going to want our bonus to be here, unless you're actually stacking an Aphelios, which in which case probably be Aphelios set or Aphelios Syndra. Additionally, you can off carry a Morgana if you had an early Morgana two star, so you don't have to carry Syndra. Uh, you could just put these items over on Morgana with a Morello or whatever. You could just put your up here on Nautilus as well and then actually carry the Morgana. That's acceptable as well. So you can side carry her. And yeah, this is the generic board we're going to look for. Before you hit set, just play a random warden. You'll be good to go. You're not going to have faded, obviously. But once you hit this, then then the comp goes giga and you begin to go look for augments like you have my bow. Extra attack speed is going to be great. You know, uh, not little buddies, but um, best of friendo. It's going to be pretty good. Bulk is going to be good. And assuming if the meta is actually slow, you're in a slow lobby. Things like Ascension will also be good as well. And yeah, this is like the most standard comp. But hopefully it'll finally be meta. When I was looking at data on Ash, like she's so weird right now in the data, because the only time you play her is when you have like a giga faded comp or you're playing three star Ash with everything must go. So like, this is what I think is probably her best, but there's no data to really uh, bounce off, bounce off of because the data is so terrible. Uh, anyways, next up is going to be a Reaper Kane carry comp. This is a Kane and Morgana duo carry. I know I featured Morgana a lot. That's because she hasn't been a carry this set at all, except for on PBE. And I think she's finally going to be a real carry. So that's why I'm featuring her quite a bit. And she just plugs and plays in a lot of comps. She's kind of like that unit that you can fit in every comp and always provide something good, assuming the unit is actually good. I do think she'll be good next patch. We'll see, though. I will have to see when it goes live. But anyways, this is a Kane Morgana duo carry, and then Annie is our main tank here. Remember, Annie is getting some really sizable buffs. So his HP buffs are going to be really, really insane for her. And so I think this can be quite good, as well as Alun's being buffed as well. So uh, this is going to be great. Look for standard Reaper, Reaper type augments. If you guys have been playing Heavenly Yone, you'll already know these types of augments are super good. In this setup but i think i think with the setup specifically things like inspiring epitaph not today healing orbs and then more augments other than that just combat augments are going to be great here and you'll be good to go yeah so the whole point of this comp is that annie's going to buy time while morgana slowly drain tanks him down and then kane resets in the fight with edge of knight and then gets to their back line and we just shred him down with a loon morgana and kane good to go definitely want to play in the four reaper if you can get a reaper emblem it's great because you can drop kindred you can maybe play some more sages you know play diana something like that before you hit wukong maybe play diana or something or just play like a really good unit like orn something like that just 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 a great plug and play unit and that's kind of a flex spot here and we'll be good to go i think this comp's gonna be pretty good uh next up we're going to talk about a really interesting comp i love playing i i, I started like teching this well-fed stuff i had a first place game on the current patch on 14.7b where I rerolled Aatrox and Riven because I had well fed and then I had Ascension and it was actually kind of nuts. And I do think a setup like this, if you get well fed at the beginning of the game, maybe you have like a two star Koboko opener with like, or maybe a two star Rek'Sai or a Koboko pair or something like that. 
I think you could definitely take well fed and then start building towards this build items for Silas, build it on, on our Kobuko. Uh, you know, he's not going to be super strong with this setup very well again, but once you can get to this comp, it can go giga and well fed is great. Cause you can roll in level six, make like a four bruiser comp, two star Aatrox, two star ribbon, that sort of thing. Play around story weaver. It can be quite strong in the mid game to get to this composition. And so the whole point of this comp is that we're going to drain them down with Silas and Morgana. Again, another drain comp with Morgana. And anyways, yeah, so we just go for six bruiser with well fed, look for things like Ascension. Unified is like the nuts, like this is the nuts setup. And then also we could go for something like fully adaptive, go double adaptive hell here. But if you can get this item set up on a well fed, uh, well fed unified Silas, this, this stuff is very broken. And just put Galio next to your Silas to protect him so that whenever Silas is going in there going ham, if he starts to get focused, then Galio will taunt and will de-aggro for him. So if you don't end up playing Morgana, you could play, you could potentially play like Azir Alune here can be okay as well. If you don't play the Umbral, I do think Umbral is quite good here. Just the, just the little execute when Silas is in the background spinning around. He gets people really low and, and sometimes he can't quite kill them, but with the execute, it's really nice. So I think this setup is going to be great. But if you don't play this, you can play like Soraka and Rakan for Altruist. Altruist Emblem is going to be great here because we're always going to play Riven. And then also additionally, if you have a bruiser emblem, then obviously that's going to be great. If you have a bruiser emblem, it's almost always going to be uh, Soraka because Soraka is a great unit to play frontlined. So if you end up getting a bruiser emblem, yeah, if you end up getting a bruiser emblem, put your, put your Soraka in the front line near your Silas, maybe not exactly like this, but near your Silas in front of their back line, uh, because she will be quite tanky and she will, uh, she will mana reave their back line, which is, which is amazing. So she is like the best user of the emblem. So look out for that. If you get the emblem can be quite, quite nice. And is that the last one we're going through? This is the last one we're going through anyways, guys. So this video is just kind of a prediction. I can't guarantee these comps will be meta, but I just wanted to show you guys some stuff I've been cooking and some stuff that you can try on the first day of the patch. I'll do a proper meta report at the, after the patch actually goes live a few days into the patch. So we'll do a proper meta report once we have data, but I hope this helped you guys out and good luck climbing at the beginning of next patch.